Hi everyone and welcome to today's stream. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. It's going to be a drawing in Copic markers and hopefully today's title card is showing the uh, title of point setter. And that's a bit of a play on words and I'm sure you'll catch on to what I'm up to. So if you enjoyed this video please feel free to like or subscribe. Um, I'm also on YouTube as you'll see in the link below. So without further ado onwards we go. Oh and today's uh, mediums I've just done an outline of the drawing that I want to do very lightly in a 5B pencil and the paper is a Bristol board and it's 250 GSM A3 size today. Uh, I'm working on A3 because I just want to be able to like trim around the shape uh, so I'll cut this to size once I've got it. Now I did this design a few years ago as a rough and it went down two ways. Some people loved it, some people hated it and I never actually did do it as a proper design so that's what the aim of today is. So Copic colours I haven't actually decided what I'm using but I've got my photo and so I'm not going to be using this photo so much but I will be using the paper uh, to work out what Copics I'm going to use so I'll be writing down like RO5 and such. I've gone and misplaced my Copic colour chart so there'll probably be a little bit of delay while I'm working out which colours I'm going to use but I think roughly I know what I'm going for. And you're probably wondering why on earth I'm going to be using RO5 when join, drawing a pointing setter. Like I say, play on words today. And if you've seen any of my images before, uh, I think you'll catch on to what I'm going to be up to.
Okay, so that's R22 is the first layer. Now I'm going to have a look and, whoop, without knocking everything flying, I'm going to try and find a colour that's going to be slightly darker, but not too dark. See, now R32 is darker, but it's not quite the dark that I'm looking for because it's a different type of red. And let's see, R37, it's definitely going to be in on it. As is, let's see, R50, I'm R59, so I think it's going to be R05. So that's R22, R37, R59, and R05. But before I go and add all those, I need to add the greens in. Because if you know this Christmas plant, you'll know that the apparent flower is in fact a leaf. So it's almost like a variegated plant. And uh, this plant is actually toxic to cats and dogs, so if you do get it over Christmas, you need to keep it away from your pets, because it's pretty nasty. Okay, so for greens I'm thinking G17, G28, YG63 and YG17. That's two types of green, but uh, looking at the plants, there is quite a difference in each plant to what colours you get. So, we'll just have to have a play. So I'm going to use the YG17 to start with and just to start mapping out some of the green parts and filling in the gaps. Okay, so as you can see, uh, a drawing that's going to be what you would think would be green and red has got a lot more colours in it because by using the YG17, the G17, the G26 and the YG63 that should give us a really nice uh, definition of shape and form. So we'll start off with the YG17 just to map out where the greens are going to be.
So as you can see, I'm leaving. I'm still leaving a large amount of white spaces, and this is partly because of the shape of the actual plant. Doesn't it's almost like a circle, uh, with and the leaves do stick out on stems. Well, the main, the green leaves stick out on stems, and the red leaves don't stick out quite so much. But also, I'm thinking of adding in some other decorations into the white, so that gives me a chance to play. And as you'll see, I'm still working uh, as the image builds up. I'm working in the shape of the body. So where there's a leg stopping or a, an ear, then there's kind of an edge there, just to make sure that I don't lose the the actual shape of the dog. Because if I just did it as a flat, uh, straight drawing straight across and didn't add in say curved details and such or stop lines then it would just be a flat image but by curving some of the leaves around it means that the image will have dimension and shape to it which is quite a critical part Okay, so now we're going to go back into the reds and going to be using RO5 to start picking out some of the detail on the actual uh, red leaves. So I'm going to start roughly where I started to begin with and I'll be using the R22 to blend out if needed. And we're actually going to bring in the R37 and R59. You'll note that I'm not going all the way to the middle because there's going to be some detail in that part and I don't want that to be too cluttered. And you also note with the darker colours I start to change the shape slightly.
you'll note that I'm using a kind of flicking brushing technique and that's just to keep texture moving in the image and uh, this is pretty much what they call a free pen blend so R05, R59, R37 and I'm working quite quickly so that I can blend with the wet on wet ink I'm keeping a lot of the darkest areas to the middle and just adding in the shadow where I need it and then with highlights I can come through with a white pencil and just add any veining and detail in with the white pencil I wouldn't go straight for a white pen because it may be too harsh so that's something also to take into consideration if you're going to do highlights how harsh do you want them I said about that I'll be adding in detail further into the plant now. <laughs> That's a drawer you can hear. Uh, right, there's a particular pen that I'm hoping to find in my newly organised pen pot. Is this is what happens, I organise everything and I can't find it. Um, now a lot of you probably have got rollable gel pens. Uh, and those should work. Ah, oh, there she is. Um, but I've got so to do this, you can use the various types of rollable. Test out what shininess and uh, quality you've got on spare paper before doing this, because you can get like an antique gold and a yellowy gold, and then. That also applies to the pilot pens. Come here. Sorry, I'm fighting my pen draw. <laughs> right, so in this case, I've got a pilot gold. That's a medium tip. And then I have a pilot gold marker. Now, both of these uh, don't contain any nasties. That's a fine point, that's a medium. The medium is a duller gold than the fine. The fine has got much more sheen to it. So whenever you're going to use gold markers or silver markers, bronze, copper, always just do a test on a spare piece of paper before putting on your artwork so that you know exactly the strength and the type of gold that you're getting. If you're going to use things like pilot pens, you've got to be aware that they are a separate chemical in here. That's why you've got the ball bearings. So you can hear those in there and that's just to mix them up but if you shake them too much and you prime them by plunking them up and down too much you get a flood through the end and it can completely annihilate a drawing so to test never put your test sheet on top of the drawing you're doing put it on a separate area and test away from your main drawing I've had, I've had a few times when I've forgotten to do that and I've just had a massive spill. So I'm just... See my skinny pilot one, the cha the um, clear chemical comes out, but not the gold. For at least the first few strokes. Whereas my big chunky pilot comes out quite well mixed, a bit dry but well mixed. So let's see, just quickly do a test over here of what golds I've got. Hmm, that one's definitely run out. Um, let's see if I can show you this. So um, it's not great, but that's basically the fine pilot. That's a chunky one. And then the one that I've got in my hand, that's this really finely yellowy gold and then the other one is more of an antique gold so once again that's why I say test before you try so I'm actually going to go for the what one is this, this is a 
uniball. Anything about these pens, you've got to remember is they're non-archival. So whatever you do isn't going to stay archival. So if you want the image to sell, keep the original and get copies. And that's a piece of detail I wanted to add in. Let's see if I zoom in. So tiny, tiny dots. So now I'm going to keep that marker to the side and make sure my others aren't hand. Because there's nothing worse than picking up the wrong pen. Right, so on to the next flower. And uh, as this settles, because sometimes it takes about half an hour to settle in the ink to blend through, but I'll show you the bleed on it. Um, so while I'm letting that dry, in fact, this is good, we got next to no bleed. Um, as that dries, I'll work on another one and then I can come through, reanimate the ink if I need to. Uh, but overall, I should be absolutely fine to just keep on going with my free pen blend. So off we go again. Another thing, don't rest your pens on your original drawing. I have a terrible habit of it. Try to either keep them in hand or put them somewhere where you can grab them because if you take off the lid and it leaks, once again, you're going to ruin a drawing. You'll note with me, when I open Copics, I often open them at the end I'm not going to use first and then I put the lid back on and then go for that end. That's because uh, with Copics, they build up pressure in the barrel. And if you don't release the pressure and then go and draw straight away on the odd occasion, not every occasion, but you'll get a flush of ink and it'll just splat. So I do that away from my drawing most times so that I haven't got a risk of any spots or splatters coming out, which sometimes does happen when the pens have got a lot of ink in them. And there's another handy hint.
Okay, so I'm just going to give them a couple of minutes to dry. So you notice sometimes that I actually have the markers in my hand. Sometimes it's just easier to work from the hand, but it's at the end of the day, it's what's comfortable for you. And the nice thing about Copics is the barrel is quite nice and straightforward to handle. So um, unlike the Spectrum Knob, which are pretty darn chunky in comparison, um, I struggle to because I've got small hands. I struggle with the barrel size and though there is a grip there it's not always the most comfortable though I believe they are ergonomically designed whereas I'm just small hands small pen <laughs> right so back to the R5 or R05 You'll also notice that what I will try and do is mix up the way that I do the blends so that each flat, well, each leaf is individual in its design. And that way it's, it's the same enough to know that it's the same plant, but it's different enough to make each one an individual. I'd like if you were to draw a line of 10 terriers each one will be different in some form or another, but they will still all be terriers.
Now if I wanted to add any more shadows to these flowers, which I probably will do later on once I've done these three layers, then the colours I would probably go for would be the kind of earth red browns. I don't think I'd be looking at greys as I get the feeling that they would actually mute down the colours whereas I want this image to be quite bouncy and vibrant. So I'll be taking probably earth tones like ooh, maybe E08 or probably more along lines of E18 and E15 and just putting them here and there just to add warmth and depth to the image at the end of the day but that's going to come on later on Also, uh, if you use a uniball roller gel pen on Copics before they've dried enough, the pen won't go down smoothly and you'll just need to quickly put uh, the gold pen over a more rough texture to get the ball inside to roll, just to clean it to make sure that there's no uh, transfer. So I'm quite happy-ish with this first part of the leg and as you can see the idea of it wrapping around the leg so if the animal was to rotate you would see the other side of the flower, flower stroke leaf uh, on the inner leg
Okay, so now I'm just going to do a little bit of the greens and start to add some detail in there. So we've already put down the YG17. So I'm actually going to go to the G17 and the G26 straight away. And this time I'm just going to try and do everything on a two pen blend. Okay, so now bringing in the YG17 to blend and soften that, that all down.
So next it's going to be back to the reds and I'm going to just do the rest of the flowers and we'll see where we go. And in fact I'm having a look at them, I'm t quite tempted to start to add in once I've got the whole lot done with the three layers then I'm probably going to come back in and start to actually put a little bit of more detail into there. So see how we go.
So I hope you can see how this image is actually starting to take shape. You'll note that with the leaves I'm not uh, doing straight veining through the middle of them. So I am indicating where the deepest part of the plant is. But I'm making sure that it's got a slight curve on it. And that way it'll help show the three dimensional shape that I'm hoping to show. And once this is all finished then I will come through and add in uh, bits of the muscle definition and start to bring shading in where that is and that's where those browns are going to come in really handy to push those bits forward so like I said earlier it's not going to be a flat image or just the image pasted on the shape of the dog it's got to fit round the dog right. so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. tons more to do so better crack on
Okay, so now for one of the bits that's going to be a bit more tricky, and that's the ear. So underneath uh, this one up here, I've mapped out roughly where the ear is. And I still actually want that shape of the ear. Though I have gone over it a weeny weeny bit, I may be able to just move that piece. So the ear basically comes up there, around there, curves around, and then comes back up like a triangle. So it's now the fun of trying to map uh, the image and make sure that it curves around in the right places.
Okay, so this is an example why it's quite important that you start with light colour and build up your colours. So with the ear, I had mapped it wrong, and I had got the, the leaves in the wrong place. But because I'd only put a light layer down, I was able to, well, I am able to, bit by bit, push that back with the blender, back for the paper. And I'll give that a couple of hours to dry off reapply the blender and that should take me quite close back to the white and then I can use a white pencil just to patch that a little bit up so that's one of the reasons why it is quite important that with Copics and markers if you start off light and you spot a mistake you can undo it near enough if you go in too dark straight away and you make a mistake especially with the reds you're not going to be able to pull it back as well uh, for some reason red ink and the darker colours are an absolute nightmare to get out of um, artwork if you make a mistake and if you go and put a white pen over that it will stick out because of the different textures of the ink so there we go and as you can see I hope actually I'll bring that up, bring it up. Um, so my mistake was here you can see that's pretty much bleached out quite nicely. I'll give you a chance to have a look at the very, very light, rough detail. So we're not even into the detailed area yet, but as you can see by the different tonal layers, it's just giving that depth and dimension to the image. I must say the uh, most important refill for my Copix I've got is my blender. It's well worth getting a refill for it because uh, it's something that you will go back to time and time again if you're using it for effects to create textures or just to, as I've done, patch up a mess up. So on we go again.
Okay, so I've just put on the uh, gold stamina bits. So now I just need those little gold dots to dry a little bit more. They're still very, very wet from this one. Um, and I have got a couple of smudges and a couple of splats of red ink on here, which I'll probably push back with the blender. In fact, I might do that now while they're drying. So I'm just going to desperately try and push out any spots. Uh, the spots have been caused where I've opened the pens over the white paper and because they were a bit they had a bit of pressure in them that's literally just uh, splattered out it's not too many and if I take this image to my printer Chappie he will be able to clean this up on the scan but it's still nice to try and remove as much as possible especially when it's a red spot So next it's just starting to add the detail, well add depth into the leaf. I'll do the leaves and then that's probably going to be it for tonight in all honesty. Um, but I'm not sure yet. We'll see how we go. We've been going for nearly nearly one and a half hours I think right now so uh, we'll see how it goes. just realised I haven't even had my tea. I made a tea, lovely hot boiling hot tea and I haven't even sipped it yet. <laughs> Now that is the joy of drawing, is the fact that you will actually completely and utterly forget that you've got a drink or that you've actually done something come it. Um, it's, it's one of those addictive things. I think I've only left the oven on once when I was drawing and luckily nothing got burnt. Move this leaf a little bit bigger. Right, time for that detail. Or, uh, well, a little bit extra.
Okay, so I think I'm going to call it and uh, stop at that point. So I've got my base layers of ink down and today's pens that we used were R05, R37 and R22 and R59 for the reds. So for the greens we used YG17, G28, whoop, free range G, uh, G17 and we're yet to use YG63 which I think is going to come in further on. So that's all of the pens so far on what is technically a green and red drawing. And the gold pen that I've used today is a Uniball um, permanent ink gold, though it is taking a long time to set, uh, so I do have a couple of smudges to clear up on here. So the next stage will be adding in the detail. Now I'm in two minds and I'm going to have an experiment on a couple of the legs, but I'm just going to quickly make an alteration here. Um, so to experiment what I'm going to do is I really really want to see what would happen when I put colour pencil over this drawing so uh, something like the Faber-Castell polychromos I should be able to find a red match with my Copic marker to pencil and then the idea will be to go the next grade up in the pencil possibly two maybe change it across to um, a brown if it's in the red and probably a blue for the greens and then to actually use a very sharp pencil to start putting in line work and detail. I'm not going to over complicate it on detail because at the end of the day once this, if this turns into a card say it's got to be shrunk down to teeny weeny size doesn't it? So from A3 okay the image itself is probably the image itself is more A4 but it's probably still going to be printed out onto um, either this size card or it was shrunk down to about an A6. So I don't want to overload the detail because I still want that to show through in the final product. So a little bit of experimenting here and there. And if I can, I'll come back tomorrow, but I can't make any guarantees this week. Uh, life is busy. But I hope that's helped inspire you to go and have a go at drawing something completely different, uh, finding funny words, because I think you've probably all guessed that the uh, animal is a pointer dog, and pointers are known to point. Uh, now pointers are also known as uh, some of the breed is called setters, so if you put a pointer and a setter together you get a poinsettia. And that's also the name of the plant that's from Mexico and associated with Christmas. Yeah, I think outside the box, don't I? If you've seen my other designs like mistletoe and such, you'll uh, see where I'm coming from on that. But it's taking a play on words and turning it into something physical. And it's fun to do. It gets your head thinking of new ideas. Um, I mean, especially if you're just stuck drawing the same thing day in, day out. Uh, it's nice to stretch the mind and think up quirky things. I might think of the plant, uh, let's see, dandelion. Well, you can draw a plant with a lion head on it. Dandelion. So it's just getting your imagination going and having a bit of fun. So until next time, when hopefully we're going to really make this go bing off the page. Hope you've enjoyed. I hope this has inspired you to go out, get a pencil and a bit of paper, or grab a couple of pens, have a go, have fun, and enjoy. So till next time, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and happy drawing.